So there was a time, I think she was a teenager, when she started to post online about her performances. Um, what did you think about that at the beginning? How did you feel about that? Um, I think that, I mean, I know a lot more now than I did then. I didn't know about the world of, of the dark world of predators and people watching. And um, at that time, I thought it was all innocent. It was, it was something that she wanted to do. There was a point where I didn't even know she was doing it. I didn't even know she knew. Right. But mm. technology is taught in the schools and um, different applications and, and different ways to share things. And so creatively, she she learned and remembered all those ways in school. And then she brought it home to to figure it out. I didn't even know how to upload something to YouTube until maybe 10 years ago, right? But somehow she figured it out. So um, if if I could be put back in that time, I would have disallowed it completely. Okay. So um, when you, you and Amanda didn't see eye to eye into that, uh, was it the time she went to live with her father? I think it started before that. Um, as I said, she was she was a stubborn child, and mm. I had lots and lots of rules, right, including screen time, and she didn't particularly like those rules. I mean, she was she was um, twelve, going on thirteen at the time, and so she just didn't want to be around my house and keep hearing the rules that I set upon her. So. Uh, she she decided that maybe her dad might be more lenient, and and so she went to live with him. Okay, and um, is it the, around that time when she went to live with her dad that Amanda herself started to realize the dark world of uh, social media? Because I think there was a time where she was speaking to people online, mm -hmm. and one person was literally harassing her. Was it around that time when she lived with the dad? Oh, I believe so. When I look at the timeline, when I look at how um, during the trial, I saw the dates and, and the years and um, yeah, it, it, it happened when she was living with her dad and she was visiting me. Um, it was, it was a trying time because at that time we didn't see eye to eye and we didn't get along. So every time we met, we had a clash and, um, It was it was a trying time. And then you have to understand, I guess, even now when you hear about medical science and the teenage brain and how it works and um, the dopamine that feeds it or the, the flight or fight. And she would always fight me for things. And so I have I have a greater understanding of, of how she was thinking Uh, there's parts of me that just wish that I knew all that before and understood how how the, the chemicals work in, in the brain. And, and even when you look at her learning disabilities, and she also had ADHD, um, those would come into factor, factoring in uh, her behaviors and how she also responded to um, requests. Okay. Um, for me, the reason why I know about Amanda's story so well, it happened, I, I mean, when the viral video came, we're going to come into that. But uh, what I don't really like what happened is that the person harassing her, uh, what is it that you did everything as a mom? You reported it. You, 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 you wanted to find ways uh, how to make it stop. Even Amanda, you guys, I think you changed schools. You change areas. Why did it take so long to put an end to this harassment, this online harassment? Well, there's many factors that, that come into play. And back in 2009 and 2010, um, probably law enforcement, like like the internet is to, for kids. Um, even though it, it's been, you know, 11, 12 years, it, it's still a fairly new um, phenomenon. So. Um, 
having law enforcement no ways to track down predators um, was was a bit of a challenge back then. It's much better now as you read articles on how predatory rings of, of people are found and caught, arrested, charged, right? Um, back then it, it was it was challenging and um, it was a lot of work to try and convince law enforcement that this what was happening to Amanda was was criminal. They knew it was bad, but they had no ways of tracking this fellow down. But the UK, um, and and part of Europe, they had ways to track this down. So um, thanks to them, they were able to catch Amanda's online predator, right? So, yeah. So, and also the one thing that I read a lot extensively is the bullying that Amanda was facing because of this harassment online. Because not only the person was harassing her online, he also used a picture because apparently she was flashing at him and he used that picture, um, you know, as a profile. And then everybody started to look at that. So she was harassed for that. So not only she was struggling, I think, um, find, you know, school challenging because of a learning disability and the bullying. So in terms of well-being, how was Amanda at that time with all of this going on? How was she like? Uh, she wasn't great. It, it it was she had she had been groomed and and by this person and Lord knows who else um, into trust and talking to them online, and then the trust was um, she asking her to flash and she did and they they took a um, image of her a screen capture and then shared it threatened her for more. And then threatened to share it. And when she didn't, they posted it online on an adult pornography site for everyone to see. Plus, it was sent out to um, her social media contacts. And so that was December 2010. And it was right during Christmas, winter break. And she was really quite anxious about what her peers would think about that and when I go into schools and talk to kids I always talk about there should be no judgment and no shaming of things that happen to your peers whether it's bullying or cyberbullying or even something exploitative that has happened online um, we all make some of those errors in judgment of, of sharing oversharing when when we're young even when we're older right um, and, and oftentimes we can't take that back because once things are on the internet, it's hard to take down. And so when school started again in January, um, there were kids that were making fun of her. You, we can call it bullying and then we can call it cyberbullying because they moved it online. Um, and it really was hard for her because these kids didn't understand um, the whole I guess the whole scenario and, and that's a kid's brain, right? So the the bullying and the cyberbullying got really bad because they were slut shaming her. They were calling her names, um, names I can't even say to you on screen because um, they're not acceptable. And it took a toll on her mental health. And, and that's when she started to spiral. Now, at the same time, her predator, he had 22 aliases. So, um, he was probably following her on um, Facebook at the time and other places and seeing what she was posting and how she was, how she felt. So he used that against her also um, and then continued to harass and threaten her um, to, for more videos and more images. And so even when Amanda changed schools, um, the story followed her because the internet as we know it now, is the internet. And you don't need to be in living in the same neighborhood in order to threaten someone. You can do it online now. And and that was scary because she, we didn't know who it was. We didn't know how to find that person. Um, and at the time, we, we had taken Amanda off the internet for a while. But as soon as we allowed her back on, it's like three months later, 
he appeared again. So obviously he was following her on, on her social media with different names. Okay. Um, um, as a mom, you did everything, you know, as a parent, I would have done the same thing. I would have took her off uh, internet. I would have, you know, inquest what, what is like, I think you did um, complain to the police. I think you did report it to us, what was happening. But for me, the bullying in school, what, what didn't, no one do anything about it. Was it that they allowed her to be bullied in school? Well, because it was on the internet, it became more than one school. It became, you know, kids from a lot of schools and in the community. And when she moved, then you had two communities going after her. And so there are different laws with, with even children bullying. Um, it doesn't become a criminal act until someone threatens your life. And so it was a matter of just the schools would talk to the kids and the kids would like agree and say, we won't do that again and go away. And then it would start again. And so it was just a, a horrible cycle. I think that the conversation about bullying and cyberbullying has changed a bit in, in mm -hmm. since Amanda's, since this was going on with Amanda and since her, her death, um, people are taking it more seriously. Parents are taking it more seriously. Um, kids are learning more about empathy and how to respect each other, but there will always be those who feel power in making others feel bad. Yes. Right? So yeah. um, I think that when, when people say, how do you think we can stop the bullying, the cyber bullying, the exploitation, I don't know if it'll ever stop, but we can prevent it. And those preventative measures are, are talking to our kids, um, whether you're a teacher, or whether you're a parent or caregiver, um, teaching them about respect and how to interact with others. And I know COVID had a big, there's, there's a, a big dark spot with when COVID and we were all locked down and we were online and, and it actually taught kids how to um, find their social lives online. And that has continued right mm -hmm. and and now we have this big boom on exploitation and sextortion that's happening around the world um but we also have to have a conversation about artificial intelligence and generative ai and and how that's being used to um harass and victimize young children 